whenever a company implements AI solution and reduce the amount of work for an overwhelming employee or the automation for a, whatever the process, I never actually seen um, redundancies. This I thought, I thought was important to say because usually people are reassigned to other tasks. <music>
because from there you can actually and it is already been proven it's just immature for now you can literally uh, make uh, a transaction directly through the brain you just not need to talk and from this uh, technology you could just translate your thought into an action and something so you don't need the typing you don't need the voice you don't need anything you just need the thought clear concise thought and you directly send a message to another person Obviously, this is um, futuristic, not in the sense it will not happen, it will happen. If futuristic in the sense we don't know when it's going to happen. And the important thing on this trend is understanding that this will speed up the economy. That's why it's commercially important. That's why there are money, money, money invested in this technology. <music> so, but, in my experience, the reason why many companies do not invest in AI or things like that is actually on, on, on the bottom of the infrastructure. Usually it's not a problem of I want to invest in AI solution or software that do whatever it does, uh, but it, because they're missing the IT infrastructure, the cloud servers, things like that, because these are a very expensive part to do it. It's a digital transformation journey to implement uh, um, whatever the infrastructure is. And this is usually the bottleneck, okay? The lack of proper infrastructure. That said, very shortly, uh, whenever a, a company is considering to do AI or not already considering to do AI, I would say two things. First is uh, do an assessment internal to the company and understand all your processes and understand if there are processes that are laborious and repetitive. If there are, and I'm sure there are, ask yourself, okay, would my company be better if even 20% of this process would be automated? So is the, is the repetitive part can be, get out of the employees and be automatically done. If so, well, there is a case in which you can call uh, any AI consultancy you want, explain what the process is, and ask them if they can implement part of it. The other part is if your employees obviously are overwhelmed by work, whatever the work is, that's a good consideration to, to, to talk to an AI consultant and see if you can make your employees not overwhelmed by work. And all of that, um, I would like to stress that at least so far, I haven't seen whenever a company implement AI solution and reduce the amount of work for an overwhelmed employee or the automation for whatever the process, I never actually seen um, redundancies. This I thought, I thought was important to say because usually people are reassigned to other tasks. So, first of all, when implementing AI policy probably you need to come back a little bit more on AI as a, a product and implementation and that's obviously deriving to a policy. There are two three things that I think is more important than the other obviously in this short time. One is data integration. Usually is uh, data which obviously underneath any AI model or any AI policy you, you're gonna make in your company. Um, so data integration is necessary because usually data is cut around the organization. There is HR department, the sales department has a bit of data, and usually an AI model and therefore the policy on top of it needs to consume this data in a seamless integrated way. And usually this is a difficult thing to do, integrate the data. The second aspect of is sensitivity of the data. Sometimes company have uh, and needs to have for their own AI model um, sensitive data or citizen data, things like that, they obviously are regulated. And that means that you need a higher cost of cybersecurity expense and compliance and governance on top. I'm going to talk about that uh, uh, in, in the company I've been invited. There is, apart from GDPR, now there is AI governance coming to play in 2024, next year. And um, and that, that will require company that have uh, uh, risk or human life or any life to be compliant uh, in their own policies when they when they uh, apply them all. Not just the data, but then they use them all. You can talk about that uh, more if you like. And the third aspect is all about uh, um, trust. 
We need to remember the AI technologies are usually a very sophisticated piece of software and mathematical algorithm. Um, there is a very deep technological and knowledge um, gap to, to, to essentially understand what exactly they do. That also means that uh, business stakeholders usually don't understand very well what the technical team does, and that's create a gap in trust. Yeah. Whatever I see is company that maybe terminate the problem, terminate an AI solutions, or they are very reluctant to implement an AI policy. Usually they have uh, a lack of people that can, you know, do the bridge between the stakeholder in the business, uh, um, you know, uh, perspective and still be able to communicate effectively with the technical team. Having someone or a group of people that can create the trust within the organization is, is one of the biggest challenges I saw. Yes and no. Uh, let's say if you're talking about AI ethics in, in the sense of there is, um, you know, um, war uh, problem or, you know, when you combine AI, for example, for nuclear weapon, is that scary? Yes, it is. It's very scary, but it's not going to be solved with uh, any specific regulation within a country. At least that's my opinion. Of, opinion of others is you need treaty or non-proliferation yeah in exactly the same way you probably do nuclear uh, non-proliferation treaties you need ai uh, non-proliferation treaties in which you regulate all the candidates you do okay that's very scary and yes there is an ethical problem on using ai to do weapon etc but it cannot be solved within a a country but it has to be so worldwide it otherwise make no sense that's my opinion uh, if you talk about ethics as in job displacement, AI will displace jobs. Not too much in the sense that, yes, there is a temporary problem. Uh, for example, if you have self-driving car, definitely you have less driver around or things like that. Yes, it's temporary as in these people need to be retrained to do other jobs. Yes, but it's not a long-term solution. Obviously, we don't have enough time to talk now. There are cases in the past in which technology actually increases the number of jobs for everyone, not decreases. Uh, the famous example, the cashier or, you know, the, the, the bank, the cash machine invented in the 60s actually increased the job, not decreases. There are many cases like that, but no, job displace, displacement is a temporary solution. If you talk ethics uh, around uh, accountability or manipulation or privacy around the data involved uh, in AI model, yes, there is a problem around that, but that is solved through regulations, uh, uh, standards or things like that. It's not a problem necessary on the you know, uh, moral uh, principles, it's a problem about regulations. That can be solved in that way. So depends on the situation. There are very different ways, but in you know, in this short time, what I would say is, if you are client facing and you are using any AI solution, just be transparent. Say to the client, yes, we are using AI solution to do things. Example, quick example: if you're using a chatbot to communicate with your client, customer service, or maintenance, whatever it is, just say this is a chatbot. Yeah, don't pretend it's a human. Is that it's not? Um, Within the company, within the process of the companies, there still is a problem of safety and integration of data. Um, data quality is actually the main problem down there and corruption of the data or things like that. And that is kind of related to one thing, especially with generative AI called reward dockings which means essentially you take an AI model and you try to, you figure out a strategy that make the AI model do things either malicious or not intended to use in that way. Like, um, you know, a chatbot trying to offend a person, you do a strategy to be able to, to make the AI uh, chat to, to offend people or things like that. And that's that's obviously kind of a safety, equity uh, concern, concern. And the way you... The way you solve again is based on regulation and two other things that are going to emerge are actually emerging now. One is the, what is called machine learning operation, essentially a framework or processes that uh, allow an organization to standardize the process of taking the model, 
data quality training, retraining the model if they need new data come in, do the maintenance of the model if it's necessary to upgrade the software in certain ways. All these kind of framework will help to manage the safety and integrity of the AI solution. And obviously, the other aspect is standards. Uh, the ISO standards, they now 9001, for example, the data, well, sorry, management quality standards is just an example. There will be, actually, there are regulation uh, and ISO certification, they are going to come into play in the next years. In fact, I'm involving the R slash one, as I think it's called, related artificial intelligence. This will help companies to, to, to essentially certify that their own processes uh, are compliant with a certain safety and integrity standards. <music>and find many generative AI solutions from obviously uh, generation of text, generation of image from, from text, generation of voice, of tone of voice, uh, you name it. All these kind of uh, tools are very useful or at least fun to use in a working environment. But I would say this, no matter what generative AI tool you're gonna use, uh, please remember to do the last touch yourself, yeah? I like, I like to remember that even maybe I'm not sure how many people you know, but even in the 1600s, the most famous artists, Leonardo, Michelangelo, sculptor or painters, uh, they were known doing all the work themselves. Yeah, they have actually a team of people that were doing the framework of the painting or the initial, you know, shape of a sculpture. And then in the in the case of the sculpture, they will do the last two millimeters of you know carving engraving that was the moment on where the art is coming from yeah that's where the moment where the big famous artist make the difference the last two millimeters of a, of a statue or you know in the paintings doing the details the detail where that was the moment where the artist the famous artist was coming in the rest was done by by uh, his own team so whatever generative AI you're using, please remember to do at least the final reading. And if you need to change a comma, please do. Just the la last final touch, that's what make the difference. So usually the people that are coming to, to listen to my talks are a variety of people from technical people to business people. And I think depending on the situation people get from me, or either technical knowledge and tips how to exactly implement a specific, uh, you know, solution for manufacturing or, you know, customer service, uh, they get the technical knowledge to do that. That's kind of one on my talk. Or it's more on a business stakeholder level when I try to um, explain strategy or approach how to use AI uh, in their own um, companies, they have to transform the company from a, you know, non-digital model, no AI based to an AI based. And related to that, understanding how to make a fair, fair return of investment when investing in AI. That's very important, especially because we are in business, right? And explaining how to get a return of investment in AI solution is probably a tricky part because AI is not a software you can plan everything in advance is a technology that needs data that is unknown a priori before until you touch it.